Sabelo, why do you think uh, there's a need for structural, epistemic, and personal decolonization? I think the what we need to, to take into account is that colonialism is a planetary mm. uh, force mm. of domination. That's one. Mm. Two, we need to also take into account that it affects all aspects of human life. Mm. Structures, mm -hmm. knowledges, mm -hmm. and interpersonal relations. And uh, therefore, if you want to do decolonization, mm. you need to target it in its pockets, the structures, the knowledges, the institutions of higher education, the interpersonal relations. In simple terms, colonialism hides in the structures. Structurally, it means that the world remains hierarchical. Structurally, at the top echelons of the structure, the invisible structure, mm. obviously, is the United States of America, mm. with its Pentagon, uh, with the now the NATO, and all. They are up there. They are the ones which oversee this world. There's one they discipline if you try to do change here and there. Mm. So structurally, we are still hierarchical. Mm. Uh, hierarchical in a political sense and a very visible political sense. That the, the very fact that we have something called a superpower is a sign of a structured a system of power. And uh, that structure of, uh, of power is colonial by its very nature because those who are on the top, on the apex of it, they detect what must be done below. So, so it's, a, it's as simple as that structurally. Mm -hmm. But structurally also, it, that structure reproduces itself even within countries. Even countries in the global south, mm -hmm. the elites up there, mm -hmm. the workers below, the peasants and the women below. It's a, it's a, it's a, is a, is, a, is, a, is a hierarchical structure. And if the structure remains like that, colonialism did not go. Because what was meant was that everyone needed to be reborn as citizens, mm -hmm. equally consenting citizens. But if we maintain the structures, it means others. That's why we have first families. I don't know whether we have fourth or fifth other mm -hmm. families. Mm -hmm. so, so structurally, there is that. But structurally also, you have also problems of institutions. Mm -hmm. Institutions like universities, which are actually a cog in the world system, mm -hmm. reproducing those structures. And hence, structurally, we are saying they need to undergo institutional change. Mm -hmm. So they need also to change institutional change so that they don't become places for elites. And secondly, they don't become those spaces whereby if you have no money, you cannot even come near. Mm -hmm. it, 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 they, are, they are supposed to actually um, conceive knowledge as a public good, not as a commodity which is sold to those with money. So, so, so the, the structural issues, I think, they are as clear as possible. Mm -hmm. the, the structures are racial, the structures are patriarchal, the structures are economic, mm -hmm. and they are still standing. Why do you think that uh, in the whole world, the bulk of the working people who clean the toilets, who clean the streets, are people of a particular race? Mm -hmm. It was not made by God. It's a structural issue. Because they were dispossessed under colonialism, they were enslaved. They lost everything, so they are selling their labor to the, to the, to the racial capitalist system. And when we are saying racial capitalist system, we are trying also to make it clear that people understand that if you use the word capitalist only, it doesn't really capture the essence of the reality. The reality is that there are particular people of a particular racial orientation who own the means of production, then there are people of a particular racial orientation who are providing labor mm. across the world. Mm. That's, that is at the structural level.
And what about epistemic uh, decolonization? The, the, the simplest answer to that also is that uh, knowledge is not innocent. Knowledge is political. And as political as it is, there is knowledge for liberation, there is knowledge for oppression. So what we, 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 we reproduce and the perhaps we teach, we might actually be teaching knowledge is for domination. And if I can put it this way, when I was talking about uh, that uh, if you create a social pyramid, you need to govern it. Yeah. What I did not elaborate is that all aspects of human life are subjected to coloniality of power. All aspects, including concepts of beauty and the art, is subjected to that, to that structure of power. Spiritualities are subjected to that uh, structure of power in the sense that perhaps the written uh, uh, <clears throat> religions, uh, Christianity and the Islam, they are the ones who are on the top. All others are delegitimated. Other forms of spirituality are delegitimated. If you go to language, you will find, again, written languages, colonial languages, we are using it even now. <laughs> uh, other languages are not even in the academy. They are actually in the, in the, in the margins of, 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 of the academy. You can go list by list. There is nothing about modern life which is not subjected to coloniality of power in a hierarchical manner. Mm. The same thing with knowledge. If we have no alphabet, therefore we have no knowledge. It's as simple as that. Mm. If your knowledge is, is oral, it is inferior to written knowledge. Mm. If yourself, you are said to be subhuman, mm. it fundamentally means you have no epistemic virtue. In other words, whatever you say, it doesn't carry value. This is why you will find uh, maybe scholars like Chakrapati Spivak speaking about the question, can the subaltern speak? It doesn't mean that they have no voice. They have no voice, but who listens to them? Nobody. Because of this, this structure, even voices are hierarchized. Mm -hmm. so, so the epistemic fundamentally means that... Uh, the, object, the knowledge which is considered to be objective, scientific, is the one which is privileged. All other forms of knowing are pushed to the margins, displaced, or even denied that they are knowledges. Why do you think personal decolonization is necessary? Personal uh, uh, decolonization is necessary because colonialism affects interpersonal relations. The major issue is that uh, colonialism works through divide and rule. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, colonialism also works through hierarchizing uh, people's relations. And in, in terms of decolonization, we want, therefore, to destructure that so that we bring back the issue of interdependence of human beings. Uh, and they also uh, make sure that the relations between human beings is, is, is underpinned by ethics, is underpinned by what in the Southern African region is called Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. We see ourselves in other people. Mm -hmm. We don't actually see other people as a resource to exploit. Mm -hmm. So that's why it is important to... To, to when you think about decolonizing, you need specifically to say uh, in which sector should I intervene? The structural sector, mm -hmm. you intervene. The epistemic sector, you intervene. Mm -hmm. The personal sector, you intervene. And the personal is where there is a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. Because colonialism enters even our psyches, mm -hmm. uh, the way we think. Mm -hmm. It also affects our, uh, what we call our consciousness. Uh, and uh, it is important that we intervene in that space by starting by decolonizing myself before I talk about decolonizing other things. Mm -hmm. Then the, when it comes to interpersonal relations, mm -hmm. I think that one is almost self-explanatory. <laughs> uh, as long as there are some people who are privileged in terms of their, their race, their gender, there are some who are underprivileged. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing whereby it even 
translates into 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 the space of gender struggles. That uh, if you if if you go by Fanoni's analysis, he will say the world then became divided into zone of being and the zone of non-being. Those who have full humanity, they occupy the zone of being. And in the zone of being, it means ethics, law, good governance, human rights, democracy, determine your life. In the zone of non-being, expropriation, violence, and all what, what is subjected not to human beings is subjected to people. The same thing, even if you are women, women in the zone of non-being and the women in the zone of being. Of course, you can all cry about patriarchy, but patriarchy subjects you differently in the, across the zones. So that's, 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 where, that's where we are.